This is Phoenix, and I'm going to read from my newly published book, The Street Kid. Um, if you like what you hear, uh, check out um, the link, which will be on the um, description for this specific video, um, and you'll be able to find the book. Um, so I'm going to read from uh, part four, which is called The Road Always Darkening, um, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, without further ado, here it is. One, why do things change so fast? The world is against you, they hate you. Why didn't you understand this basic concept when you were born, when you were death before birth, the mountain of pain I reached? Different stages in your overall pattern of life, born, burn, more than once, rise up again for the fourth time, rise up again in cycles. The snake angel had indeed remained quiet for the time that he said he would for that year with Phoenix now 20 and feeling better about the world in many ways, but only because he knew that things were going to change with the snake angel in mind. Everything is apathy, everything is murder. Why can't I just? Occasionally, Phoenix had felt free, feeling as though he wasn't wearing any clothes, and there had been other times when the snake angel made his presence known, but for the most part, it was as though he didn't even exist because, because he has to get to know you better. But now it was time for those things to change. The world only cares about apathy. They only care about being an irritation. Except Phoenix wasn't sure he believed that. He believed the problem was with himself. Except that's not true either. Maybe it's me, but it's also the world. Can't they sense the evil that stalks everything? Can't they feel all of the sin that makes itself known? The snake angel isn't the devil trying to help it all. But he does have dreams that he wishes he could reach. And the world is in the way it should be different. It should. Phoenix felt the snake angel rattling within him, getting ready to strike. It was time. Things are changing. Phoenix, are you ready for it all? Are you ready to? Phoenix wasn't sure if he was ready for anything, really. Only sure that he wanted to see honesty, see the world for what it really was. A stinking sack of uselessness. That was what it was, and the snake angel was going to fix all of that. It's only perception. Ha, I wish that was true. You have to believe that you can heal the damage and corruption that has been done to the innocent. The snake angel said through Phoenix, you have to believe. If you don't believe you can change anything, you're of course wasting your time. So come on, Phoenix. Are you going to stand up to repression? Are you going to let the bad guy in blue and the murderers know that it is over for them? That they aren't going to play this game anymore? All of these mind games, yes, you were right. They are sickening. I can't stand them anymore. It's time that we break into the bad stuff. It's time that we... Phoenix believed in his friends, and he felt that all of them were with him now. In his head. He knew they were going to protect him from anything that happened as he opened the door to a coffee shop that was famous in this part of the city. People always stepping inside for a drink or two. Always stepping inside to get the famous cup of joe. And Phoenix, I'm not selfish. This isn't all about me, you idiots. This is about us. If any of you actually cared about that possibility, but no, because you stick with your selfish little lives, you was going to upstage this place which had been taking part in plenty of illegal activity, such as ripping off the people they were buying the coffee, coffee from and doing it and getting away with it. And sometimes the employees would poison people just to see what would happen. Usually nothing deadly, never anything deadly, thankfully, but stuff that would get people sick. And no one ever suspected it was the lie coffee shop in the city. The one that people thought was perfect, never did anything wrong. But that was the whole point of Phoenix if you thought about it, to make things known Things that would make people uncomfortable. But Phoenix didn't care because it was his job. And he was good at it. And the snake angel was going to help him. The figure who only wanted to live in a good place. With clean smells, clean everything. A place that didn't focus so much on corruption. That focused on things that were healthy and good and clean. You can do this, man. Phoenix step in, stepped inside. Saw that the coffee shop was adjoined to a bookshop. Which had also taken part in crimes. Most of them of a malicious, selfish nature. And Phoenix needed to stop it, damn it. He needed to stop it because it was driving him insane. He couldn't stand it because it was so wrong. I'll be set the place dripped with corruption. I need to fix it. It is in my nature. Come on, don't you understand? But why do you believe it's your place to fix anything? Whoever gave you that right, you stupid jackass? Whoever cares about what you have in mind for humanity? Those are exactly the thoughts they want you to believe. If you believe them, you will never be able to help anything, the snake angel said through Phoenix. If you give them credence, they will tear you apart. But how do you know I can actually fix anything, Phoenix said. 
amazed at the hostility of the snake angel, who was only doing his job, but, well, some of it was a little extreme. I believe you can fix things because I've looked into your heart. I've seen how much you hope that society can change things for the better, how much you wish that people could live better lives than they do, how much you want humanity to feel good. The thing is, sometimes to get that done, you have to do controversial things. To right wrongs, you have to do wrong things. I know it's counterintuitive and un unexpected for me to say that, but that's the way the world is. People notice the anarchists, the ones that are burning things up. They notice the snake venom when they get a snake bite, but not a gentle kid who politely asks for them to change their ways, like you, Phoenix. There is nothing wrong with the way you handle things, but unfortunately we don't live in a world where that can make a true difference. And Phoenix already heard the snake angel's counter-argument. Ultimately, nothing is better than a kind heart and mind and soul. Never let anyone tell you different, Phoenix. Never. Phoenix, who could see the duality working like crazy in the snake angel's mind, work gently, work aggressively, like a snake, went to the counter where he could order coffee and said, Can I? Can I get? The person looked at him as though he was crazy. I'm just trying to be polite, that's all. As though he wasn't sure what he was doing. And so Phoenix added some attitude. I'd like a double latte. Come on, chop, chop. Whatever, the guy said, and went to make the coffee. You're really going to piss a lot of people off, man. I know, but this is the way it needs to be. You can disagree with my methods all you want, but you've just got to trust me. You're too unconventional. So are you, Phoenix. Surely you knew that by now. Phoenix looked at the chocolate bars on the counter. Go ahead, take one. Phoenix grabbed one of the chocolate bars. Ultra sweet. I'd say that's kind of... It's sin. Live with it, Phoenix. The guy came back and said, Are you buying the candy bar, freak? What do I do? They're already acting different. Just keep calm and let me talk. His name is Phoenix, not Freak, the snake angel said, with some sibilance. Respect him. Whatever, the guy said. It'll be seven fifty. See how much they charge, man? They rip us off a lot. Who can really pay for this stuff except for rich people? Close your hands, Phoenix. Close your hands. Phoenix did exactly what the snake angel said, and when he did, he felt something inside of it. He looked and saw he now held a $10 bill. Give him the rest of the money, but tell him something neat, something he'll remember. Phoenix handed a bill to the guy and then ruffled his hair, his stomach growling like a starving dog or a wolf kid. And as the guy put the coffee on the counter, Phoenix said, keep the change. But can you donate it to charity or the people you ripped off over the years? The guy's eyes widened for a moment, but then he quickly turned his back and went back to business. People hate arrogance, man. I'm sure you're aware of that. I am. But what's crazy is people also flock around the fires of arrogance, so it's a double-edged sword when it comes to it. I'm really drawing suspicions. I hope you have this plan. Phoenix went to a table, seeing that people were staring at him, looking up from their newspapers and books, examining him like he was a newfound specimen, or something or other, as though he was on fire, as though, and rising from the ashes, he was doing something maybe a tad too conspicuous. I don't think it's all about me, you dumb shits. I care about this world. You guys just give me so little to work with. Phoenix took a sip of the coffee and suddenly a flurry of thoughts from the snake angel flurried through him. See those guys sitting over there? Yeah, they are the owners of this joint. They've done who knows how many crimes, have overseen so much damage, and they keep doing it sometimes. Phoenix, you have to, in order to right a wrong, do what's wrong. I know you don't want to hear that, but it's the way it is. You need to believe that, man. You have to desecrate this place, even though it's considered holy. What we're doing in a strange way is exercising the evil that has crept up in this place, sort of what you've tried to do in the past, but failed at. Just believe that you're doing the right thing. Believe it, man. Believe that you're exercising the evil that has come here, and don't give up on that thought. It's the only way we can do this. Come on, Phoenix. Think of good things. Think of things that are going to bring sunshine back into this life. I know it's hard, I know it's frustrating, but come on, focus on something positive. Think about how Phoenix absorbed all of these thoughts and more. He could feel the evil trying to rise up. He could see that the face of the two people, a man and a woman, maybe husband and wife, was scrunching up in anxiety as though, as though they are losing it, as though they sense their rights are being wronged, even though it should be the reverse of that. I see what the snake angel means. The world is so empty. We could be in such better circumstances, but instead insist on capitalism and greed. To sell everything, insist that materialism is the only way to happiness. It's sickening. No wonder the snake angel hates humanity. They were unaware of what to do with the things that were changing. He heard them talking to each other. 
We have to do what's right. We're under pressure. I don't buy it. They want to step up the game. Some kid in a psychopath snake. Yes, but it's the right thing to do. We've done enough damage. I don't buy that there's nothing wrong with padding our bottom line. Who does he think he is to tell us how to live? He doesn't have the privilege. He doesn't have. We need to. He saw the man scowling in his coffee a few seconds later, and Phoenix could not stop wondering where this was going to go. Could this place be safe? It was interesting that the snake angel represented snakes, something usually usually associated with evil or the devil, and yet, and yet he believes in good. He believes in something much more simple, a garden or something, or something peaceful like a river, or just water, just something pure. It's so beautiful. Keep fighting, Phoenix. Believe in something outside of yourself. Believe you can exercise the evil out of this place. Phoenix flicked out his tongue and watched as the man gave a brief look at Phoenix, a frown but with a trace of liberation, and then stood up along with the woman. His wife? Phoenix had eaten only half of his candy bar and taken only a few sips of coffee during this time, but when he took another drink of the coffee, it was no longer the ultra-sweetness that it had been before. It tasted unbelievably bitter, unbelievably corrupt, gross and sickening. It's because they are working out the corruption, the kinks. They are confessing their sins, the evil in the coffee has been exercised. Good job, man, you did it, you. In order to right or wrong, the snake angel said, when the woman was going to look at Phoenix. And she didn't turn toward him when this was said, only continued on her way. We did it, man. Yes, we did. Hopefully we have a while before things try to corrupt again, at least with this place. Phoenix then stood up, and he realized that he was now wearing a sweatshirt. As he walked out of the building, with things much colder now, he put up his hood, feeling like he was, in many ways, the snake angel. What tastes nasty tells the truth, what? Phoenix flicked out his tongue, making a strange, disgusted sound, like, I can't believe I just drank that gross coffee. He had just tasted sin. Things are changing. They are never going to be the same way again they are. But Phoenix was happy about this as well, because it meant that there was hope, which hadn't wanted to make itself known for the longest time, being covered by endless corruption and grime and evil. And it was time for it to end. It was time for the snake angel to speak his mind and exercise all of these things. It was time to switch places. It's time to know where. Um, again, this is from my new book, The Street Kid, um, and I hope you enjoyed uh, this chapter um, and this part. Um, and like I said, if you're interested, you can find the book on Amazon. Um, again, this is Phoenix, and thank you.